Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Inside Today's Boardrooms. I'm your host, Lisa Edwards, and today with me, we have Dottie Schindlinger. She is Executive Director of Diligent Institute and here to talk to us about an exciting new report from Diligent Institute. Welcome, Dottie. Lisa, it's great to be here with you. Thanks so much for having me on the show. This is the second year that Diligent Institute has partnered with Spencer Stewart to conduct this same report. And this year, we were incredibly pleased to have such a high response rate. There were over a thousand responses. We, we included about 992 of those in the final report. And they came from around the world. So fully 55% of the responses were from outside the U.S. And that's something we're always kind of challenging ourselves to, to get more of a global response on this survey. Um, but it was really interesting. We wanted to repeat some of the questions that we asked last year to see how things are changing year over year. We know here in the U.S. there's been quite a bit of um, you know chatter about ESG this year. There's been a lot of political headwinds. There's been a lot of conversations about whether or not sustainability is still a major goal for companies. Companies. And so we wanted to ask some questions and test some of those concepts, not just here in the U.S., but also elsewhere in the world. That's great. So tell us about what some of those big highlights were and maybe maybe start by was there anything surprising in it to you? Was there anything that sort of set you set you back? There was something that that we really found quite surprising, and that was we asked a question about what directors thought was the biggest obstacles to ESG progress. And surprisingly, 45 percent of them said the biggest obstacle is that they need better insight into how ESG aligns with overall corporate strategy. So the obstacle wasn't political backlash. It wasn't, you know, waning um, enthusiasm for ESG goals. It was, we just need better insight into what's happening. So we thought that was pretty fascinating. Um, we also found it really interesting to see the differences between U.S. and European companies. Um, in, in the Europe, European context, a lot of companies really see ESG more in terms of the opportunities that it presents, whereas in the U.S., we really see things more in terms of the risk that it presents. And maybe that has something to do with the political climate that we're in. Um, but it was pretty fascinating. 56% of European companies see ESG as a majorly an opportunity, um, whereas only 30% of US companies see ESG in terms of opportunities. 13% of European companies see ESG in terms of risks and issues. 34% of U.S. companies see ESG in terms of risks. So you're seeing quite a difference um, in, in those two different regions. That is fascinating. You know, the other thing that I thought was sort of interesting in the report, and maybe you could comment on, was there was a pretty big difference in the frequency with which boards discuss ESG-related goals and strategy from a very small percentage on never to, um, you, know, only, you know, sort of a, a, almost a bell curve of then some talking about it every single meeting. But the very the interesting takeaway for me was that not just that there was that difference, but also most directors felt that it was the right amount of time, whether they were on the, net, the none or the high end. So maybe just talk about that finding and, and any thoughts on that. It's pretty funny, Lisa, because it, it is interesting. Almost every report we do at Diligent Institute, no matter what the question is, directors always feel like they're doing the right things. <laughs> so I think that speaks to just, you know, sort of a good confidence in their management teams and in the companies of the boards that, that they serve on. Um, but it was really interesting. You know, we had um, done a survey back in 2019 on issues related to sustainability. That was the first time we ever collected this data. And so we also did some comparisons to that original report, which were pretty fascinating, Back then, we were really interested to understand who's overseeing ESG at the board level. How is this actually happening? Uh, back in 2019, to only 20 percent of respondents told us that the full board was involved in overseeing ESG. Fast forward to 2023, and it was 49 percent. It was nearly half of all the companies that responded told us that the full board is engaged in overseeing ESG. So I would think that that maybe is a little bit at play in terms of how frequently they are talking about ESG issues. Um, you know, if if there's really the entire board involved in this process, they've got a very full plate. They've got a very full agenda. They may feel really good about the strategies that they've already set. They don't need to talk about it at every single meeting like they did back in 2019. So it is interesting to see how things have changed. Yeah, fair enough. And, you know, I think ESG, one of the things that's really interesting is it is super broad, right? So it could be um, one meeting, the discussion is about diversity, the next is about climate, the next is about uh, recyclability or what have you. So are you seeing any particular emphasis 
on areas of ESG and what advice do you give out of that to directors in terms of thinking through how they kind of get on top of some of these ESG issues? Well, again, there's a there's a really interesting difference in the past five years. I mean, back in 2019, when we asked, you know, how they were overseeing ESG and what what they were doing about it, it kind of sounded like the Wild West. There was no consensus. Everybody was doing something different. No one was clear on what framework to use in terms of measuring climate and, and doing climate disclosures. It was just all over the place. Again, fast forward to 2023, 90% of our response, respondents told us that they've incorporated environmental goals or metrics into one or more areas of their business, and 87% have done the same for social goals and metrics. That's a giant difference. And so I, I now understand if they've already gone ahead and done the hard work of incorporating these ESG goals and metrics into their core business, now their big concern is how can we make sure we're, we're doing well? You know, how do we track how it's going? We've we've done all this work. We've got this all embedded in our strategy. It's all through our business. We know what metrics we want to keep an eye on. How do we see the metrics? I think that's now where people's uh, focus has turned. Yeah, super interesting. And obviously, I think, you know, Diligent does a lot on uh, blog posts and, and in information as it comes out. And there's been some activity in Europe on the climate front. There's also pending activity in uh, in the United States. Uh, well, we keep hearing <laughs> on the climate front, maybe someday. Um, you know, how does that play in and how do you... Uh, um, and how do you kind of help directors with that issue? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, there, there's a lot happening in that space, as you mentioned. And so one of the things that we're hearing from directors is that they just want to make sure that they are ready. You know, whatever the SEC decides to do, the new CSRD regulation in the EU, there's a lot of focus being put on leadership of organizations to make sure that they're upholding their standards and doing the right things. So one of the things that we did last year was launch our climate leadership certification program built specifically for directors and level executives to help them get ready, not just for the regulatory compliance that they're going to have to uphold, but just to make sure that they, they can feel confident they're doing the right things. You know, proxy advisors and others, when they look at their profiles and proxy statements, will see this person has been climate certified. And, and that will really, I think, help them to make sure that they're staying on the right path. Um, and I know with that program, we are just about to release a whole overhaul of all of the regulations and all the, the legal compliance issues because they change all the time. So we've been keeping that program updated about quarterly and it's a tall task, but it's it's well worth doing. And I think speaks to why directors are looking for that kind of education. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, directors uh, aren't expected to be perfect experts in everything, but they are expected to be sort of fluent in the language, be up to speed on the regulatory environment and be able to ask the right questions and interpret the answers that they get back. So super helpful to know about. Um, so if people want to know more about this report, uh, tell us where they can go and um, and where they can find the rest of the information. Yeah, thanks for asking. It's super easy. Just go to diligentinstitute.com. Right on the homepage, you'll see a lovely little carousel with our recent work, and it's right there. It's our most recent flagship report, so we're very happy to have it. Easy to find right on the homepage. Great. Well, thank you, Dottie. That's a wrap for this week's episode of Inside Today's Boardrooms. Thank you for sharing that really interesting report on sustainability with us. Stay tuned next week for more interesting information from Inside Today's Boardroom. Thanks, Dottie. Thanks, Lisa.